Why do you create art? Does anyone care? Probably not. Illustrations by me. Look, I know people like to start out telling you, this is what my art means, and this is why I created, and I don't care. It's like you're trying to start out on the seventh date with me, and we just met outside the cafe for the first time, and you look nothing like your profile picture. There are only a few things that I care about when I first look at your art, and that's what we're going to talk about today. I've said it before, but we're going to put it, we're going to lay everything out on the table here. And then, in hypocritical fashion, I'm going to tell you why I create art. All right, let's get into it. Okay, the first thing that I want to mention to you is the only thing that I really care about is that you're creating art. Regardless of how I feel about it, regardless of how anybody else feels about it, no one else can like it, but I still want you to create art. I understand the need to create art. That's, I, we'll get to that in a minute, but, but I want you to create art even if I don't know you, and I want to encourage you to create art as much as possible because... I think it's good for you. I think it's when I get when someone is a creator and it bubbles up and you got to create and that's what has to happen. It's got to come out of you somewhere. And so you create art. You it doesn't I've seen some terrible art that still has a following because people eventually will connect with whatever you're doing. So just keep creating. Don't worry about the audience. They'll come. But in the meantime, you've got to make sure that you're creating and getting that out, getting all that energy out. All right, the second thing. When I look at your art, I only care, me personally, okay, I only care if it's interesting to look at. I don't care what it is. I've said that. If I've said that once, I've said that at least twice. I don't care what it is, what it means to you, the message behind it. Is it interesting to look at? That's the only thing I'm thinking about. Does it capture my attention? Do my eyes get drawn to certain parts of it? Do I want to sit there and just try and stare at it and figure something out? That's number one for me, even though it's number two on the list. That it goes, it's number one for me, but the other one was number one for you. You know what I mean, you heard it. So let me enjoy your art before you ruin it with your nonsense. Then after I like it, then you can share whatever cockamamie idea you were trying to convey with it. It's absurd, I'm sure, but maybe it'll just add to the story that I already care about it and maybe it'll make me care about it a little bit more or maybe it'll completely ruin the experience for me, whatever it is. But you know, I understand how much you're putting into this piece and I understand that sometimes you're, it's carrying a message behind it and I know you want to say that. You want to get that thing out so that people see it the way that you want them to see it. But really, if someone really enjoys what they're looking at, that's number one. If they don't like your art, they may love your message, but they still don't like your art. So let them like your art. Let that be the thing that's speaking, unless you want to go into writing stuff. You want to go into writing stuff, then you let your words say what your words are. But when it's art, let the thing say what it says by itself, and then you can, if they want to know, if they're interested, you can add to it later. Now that we have established that, I will be the hypocrite. I'll be the smaller person here. So first, because I am a creative person, just like I was talking about before, and that's right, I finished the adjective. I don't call myself a creative. I'm a creative person. The creative part describes me. I'm not like a different species of being called a creative. I know that I've been writing a book for like the last four years now about a species called the crafters. And when it comes out, you're going to look at it and say, this is garbage. This took you four years. I've eaten a bowl of alphabet cereal and crapped a better story than what you just gave me. Don't worry about that. That's for the future. But there's no such thing as a creative. People call themselves creatives. Because they like to sound unique and different and people should be interested in them for whatever reason. You got to get over yourself. You got to remove the ego. You're a creative person. You know that that creativity, you just, you got to get it out somewhere. And 
Really, if I wasn't doing art, I'd be writing music, which is what I did when I stopped art all those years ago when everybody told me that there's no future in art, and I just stopped doing art. Not that I thought I was going to be a musician. I don't know why I swapped the two. I don't know why I stopped creating art and started creating music. And then I, because that was never going to be a profession for me. I knew that from the beginning. I never wanted it to be. So, but I, I should have just kept doing the art thing, even though it wasn't going to be a profession for me at the time. And I could have kept up with it, but it doesn't matter. Don't worry about that. What I'm saying is I had to do something. I might have done woodworking or something. I had to create something. Second, I am awkward and I don't make friends easily because I have trouble relating to others. I know at this point of the conversation, you are shocked. You have no, you didn't, you had no idea that I had trouble making friends with people, that I was awkward. But listen, this gives me an avenue to bond with other people. And it's it done in a way that I can enjoy because quite honestly, most of the time I don't enjoy it. I hate small talk. I have nothing to say about it. I don't care what sausage you just bought on sale from some overpriced market. And quite frankly, I find your everyday activities more boring than watching this paint dry on this piece here, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. You hate doing those things yourself. Why would you want others to suffer while they hear about you doing them? Do you enjoy, oh, I had to do laundry today and I was folding it. And I, now Look, unless laundry is your, your side hustle, unless laundry is your hobby, I hate side hustle, by the way. I just, you, anyway, don't worry. So unless that's the thing, you hate doing it already. Why tell me about it? Why do I have to share in your crap misery? Don't do that to me. I know right now you're thinking how lucky my wife is, but listen, she's the only one that I actually care about hearing that information from. Most people, I don't, so that's just how that goes. But a creative outlet allows me to talk to you about something I enjoy, hopefully something you enjoy, so a conversation is already on the right track. We're already relating to things. And now we relate that thing to the person. So it's like, bam, all of a sudden you've got a friend. It's a wonderful thing that wasn't hard, right? That's not a hard thing to do. But don't abuse that opportunity with your nonsense. I mean, if you're going to start telling me about the dust mites in your bed and how you want to try and get them voting rights so they have representation in our government, before I even ever look at what you're doing and tell you how interesting I think it is, then you have just lost yourself one friend with all of your nonsense. Let's not do the, sh the small talk, short talk thing. Let's do something that we enjoy. So we, we find this creative outlet. That's how I can relate to other people. I don't have many other ways that I can do that. I got to move on. This conversation is starting to circle. Do you understand? Do you feel the same way? You let me know. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you have trouble with things that you're just you're not you're not interested in other people's nonsense their day-to-day -day lives are boring to you so you find different ways to connect with people to make it enjoying that enjoying that's not the how you use english don't worry about that the, the point is you know what i'm saying so that's the the two reasons that i make art because number one i have to I have to get that creative thing out somewhere, and I love creating art, so that's what I do. And second, it helps me to connect with other people, and now we're talking about it. That's why you're watching this channel, because we've connected over art. Isn't that a wonderful thing? There's so many people I would have never met if I never started this channel, never shared my art with people, and I would have all missed out on all of you wonderful people who listen to my nonsense on a weekly basis. So see? It's like I win and you lose. Okay, so that's the bulk of it for me. Look, there are a lot of reasons why people create art. I'm not saying that that's the only thing, but there's a lot of reasons. You, it's, yes, it's, it takes away some stress. You can de-stress while you create art. You can, um, it helps you relax a little bit, helps calm your mind, helps you uh, remove distractions while you're focusing on something else that's not your life, which at the time could be going haywire. You could have some crazy message because you're a lunatic and that's fine. But that, that don't, what I'm saying is these are the two main reasons why I create art. There's a hundred different things. If you talk to a hundred people, they'll tell you a hundred different things. But this is the other thing. Don't always make everything about one thing. 
I don't ever do that when it's like, oh, I create art because I want to share a message. Well, then you're going to suck because unless you're enjoying what you're doing, then you're not going to be conveying anything that you want to actually convey. It won't come through. You have to enjoy it. People can see and they can sense in your art when you enjoy doing it and when you hate doing it. If you hate doing it, why are you doing it? So it's always more than just one reason why you're creating art, and it needs to be. So figure that out. All right, so let me get back to this. Now, I haven't done one of these in a very long time, and I don't know why because I absolutely love them, but usually I do a lot of contrast, so I would take that black area, do the white on top of it, and this time I didn't. I wanted to put color, and I have these Posca pens that are sitting on my shelf, and they're the shimmery Posca pens, where if you move them around a little bit, they shimmer a little bit. I think those are pretty cool. I wanted to use them again. It's been a while since I've used them, and I don't want them to dry out on me and go bad before I finish using them. So I went ahead and picked them up. I just started putting them in this piece here. I think it came out pretty good. I, I, I enjoyed it. I did work this, the kind of the composition out. I didn't have the exact pieces that uh, when I did my little thumbnails before I started the video, I didn't have all the little pieces and how I want to do it with the circles with the things. And I just drew a giant shape, a giant blob on the page and just tried to make it the kind of how I wanted to make it. And I always enjoy when whenever you do like the little window that we you just peel all you put the tape down and then you paint everything inside of it and then you peel it off and it's in the nice little window. I like when sometimes you go out, you take the tape off, and then you go outside of the window. I think it adds something to the piece, so I did that here. At first, I wasn't going to do it to the second triangle that I had on the bottom, and then I ended up doing it on there anyway. So there's only one side of the... I know I like to have a little bit of tension in my art, so you don't have to like that, but I love that. So I have where it's not exactly even, it's a little bit heavier on the left side than it is on the right side. And also on the left side, I didn't go outside of the border where on the top, bottom and right side I did. So I like to have that little bit of, there's a little tension there like, oh, why didn't you make it even and go out on the other side? Because I didn't want to, I wanted to have that in there. So sometimes I do that. Just two more things I want to mention quickly. It just. Uh, people are strange. I know that it just it baffles my mind. I'm not sure what's going on here, but I you know, there's I was on my way to work. There's in front of me. There's a few cars, and uh, well, they were trucks. Really, there was a truck and a jeep to be specific. And you know, there's a little seam in the road. You know, when there's like you, someone had just patched something, and there was like a little seam, and you don't even feel it when you drive over it. I've got a small car. You just drive over it. You don't even feel it. But anyway, I've got these, in front of me, there was this giant 4x4 truck that was, I mean, it was massive. It was one of the biggest trucks I've ever seen. And then there was a Jeep that was full of mud. It was obviously just mudding. This is an off-road vehicle. And both of them swerved over into oncoming traffic to avoid the little seam in the road. And I'm just, I'm laughing so hard. I'm thinking these people are such morons. They have vehicles that are built for like off-road, rough and, and tough and all this other stuff. And I have this small little car that I just drove over and it just kind of, I didn't even hear it. It wasn't like a little bump or anything. It just went over it. It was fine. And it's just, I don't understand people. They're just, look, I don't have a problem with giant trucks. I, I Fine, more power to you. But, you know, you can not be such a weird person when you have one of those things. You can maybe not have to swerve out of the road when there's like a, you know, like a stick or something. Whatever. All I'm saying is these people are strange. The second thing I want to mention is this. I don't understand what has happened in our society where all of a sudden everybody wants to look like they've just been stung by a bee and they're having an allergic reaction. Is that a thing? When did that happen? I just, every time I see, you see it constantly and every time I see it, I'm like, oh, what did that person, do? are they okay? Like if I saw someone on the road, I'd like run up to them, I'd like reach in their pockets and look for like their EpiPen so I can, you know, jab and what... I don't, is that, are you doing that on purpose to yourself? Are you okay? Do you need medical attention? You need me to call an ambulance? I'm like, oh no, I'm fine. What are you talking about? You just, you look like your face is about to pop. You have, 
you know, your lips are like bigger than your nose. It's weird. It's, but anyway, I don't understand that whole thing. I, I don't know where that came from. Do people think that that looks nice? I don't think that that looks nice. But I mean, I know I'm just a I'm just a guy that doesn't uh, whatever. But it, what I'm saying is, I think that looks absolutely insane. I think it looks weird. And for people to want to do that to their body and make themselves look like that, I think it's absolutely absurd. It's, it's just, whatever, you do what you want, but I'm just, I want to know if do people think that that's okay. Do you think that that looks nice? Or I, don't, I think it looks weird. It's just my opinion, and I'm allowed to have that opinion, so... So if you disagree with everything that I've said so far in this video, you can blame these people that are popping up on the screen. They fund the channel, so that's their fault. Don't take it up with me. Don't yell at me. You yell at them. So thumb up the video if you understand what I'm saying. You create art because you love art, and then there are the other reasons. You, you need to create, so you're going to do it, and then you add the other reasons to it on top of that. But the number one thing is you need to create. All right. If you would like to join our community, go to illustrationsbypete.com. You can come in. You can put your own artwork on the site and promote it. You can find some inspiration in the free reference photos. You can just use them however you want in your artwork. You do not need to credit me. Or you can come into the forums and talk to some people and maybe give some advice and maybe find a little bit of information that helps you. So come check us out. All right, that's about it for me. I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.